Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to look at the New York Times API, which is an API that you can query to get information about articles in the New York Times. Shockingly, quite a surprise, yeah. So uh, again, uh, I'm not suggesting that this is the be all end all of APIs to use, but this is a nice case study of finding an API that's out there. How do you navigate its documentation? How do you figure out how to form an API query and get that data, look at that data, and make something happen on the screen in a web page using JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and this thing over here above my head. I need a hat. I just would rather have that as a hat um, uh, called P5.js. OK, so the first thing, once again, as in the previous video where I looked at WordNick, the first thing is I can spend a lot of time without even writing any code or looking at any code. Because the first thing I need to do is just figure out, like, huh, there's an API? Like, wah. <laughs> so, um, one thing you'll see here, I'm already here, but I'm at developer.newyorktimes.com. So once again, you're at the mercy of the API. How good is the documentation? Are there examples? Is there an online tool that helps you navigate the API? And again, this is a case where there is a good one. And you know, the, you know, this is that question. Like you, you went to the New York Times website, and you found all this data, and you want to use it. Is there an easy path to that, or do you have to take some sort of like side road? And in this particular video, I'm showing you the easy path. And in another video, we'll look at some side roads to how you might scrape or parse data that isn't presented in a sort of API JSON friendly format. OK, so all that aside, here I am. Welcome. Get started. This is nice, friendly language. It makes me happy that somebody's welcoming me to the page and I could get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do, by the way, um, if you're doing this on your own, is request an API key. So again, you've got to sign up for an account, get an API key. I don't believe, actually, I don't know this one. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about all of a sudden, which is uh, most of the time. But uh, I, I don't know whether there's any threshold of querying this API where you suddenly have to pay for its use. But certainly what I'm going to show you today, getting a little bit of data here and there, is something you can do for free. This is a great thing. This is something that, if you see, is good news for you. You're looking for an API tool, meaning you can figure out how the API works through an interface in the browser. We saw the same exact thing with WordNick. Um, so I could you know, click around and look at various things, available APIs, but I'm going to go here directly to that API tool. And here you can see uh, API console. Actually, you know, before I go that, let me click to available APIs. So you can see here there's a lot of APIs. There's you know, event listings and geographic data, most popular API, movie reviews. There's lots of different sort of sub-APIs, different paths within the larger API. I think I'm going to stick with, for simplicity, just this article search API. So, Interesting, amazing, this is a kind of a nice data source because it actually goes back to 1851. So I can query the New York Times to ask for, art I can search, I can say, give me all the articles that have the word rainbow in them or the word that, you know, SIBO. There's, a, there's such thing as a SIBO as I learned in a previous video or, you know, porcupine, whatever. Pick your word of choice, you can find out, find the articles. Um, so I'm going to start with that one and I could click on it. And it's actually, here's some documentation of how it all works. But once again, I, I'm going to prefer to go back and go to this API tool. And here I am. Hi, moment of technical difficulty, but I'm back and I am on the API console. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is look at how the API console works to figure out what the query is I want to make to the New York Times. So I'm in the article search API, but of course I could change to a different one. And what I want to do is click here. This is the one, uh, what's known as endpoint, being the point of end of the API where I'm going to get something. But really, I think it's endpoint is referring to search. And, or maybe that's the method. It doesn't really matter, this terminology. The point is I want to search the API. And this is the path for doing that. So I can click here. And I can see now, again, I have an interface. And yes, I want the format to come back as JSON. That's going to work well for me. And then Q is the search query term. So what am I, what are, what, what's the query term that I'm looking for articles that contain that particular word? So I don't know, I really should think of something different, but I'll just keep using rainbow. By the way, uh, no, never mind. <laughs> uh, and then there's other things. Oh, I could filter the search. Oh, there's a begin date and an end date. So I could restrict to only getting articles from like 1957 with the word rainbow in it. I could sort what I get back by a different order. So all that stuff is interesting, but it's also all optional right now. I'm going to leave it out. So I'm gonna, you, I encourage you to look through this, try it on your own, add different parameters to the ABI search. But the point is I want to hit this now. Once again, uh, the most beautiful button in the internet is the try it button, because that's going to let me just try the API without having to write the code to see how it works. Now one thing here you can see 
The New York Times will often give you some results with a key known as sample key. I've overused the sample key. So I tried this a minute ago and it's gonna like tell me, no, sorry, you've overused the sample key. But I have registered and logged in for my own API key. So I'm not gonna include this process in the video. If you have trouble, ask a question in the comments. Maybe I can help you. But once you've made an account, logged in, you will get your own key. And I'm gonna take that key and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna paste it in here and then I'm gonna hit try it. And once again, we can see this is, this is exactly what I want. I now, the API tool formed the API query for me and also you can scroll down, you can see it's showing me the data. But this is a bit awkward to look at it here so what's a little bit easier for me to do is grab this URL. Once again, open up a new tab in the browser, paste it into the browser and now I can start to look at the data as it looks in, in, in the browser itself. So I can start now. Now here's, so first of all, it might look like this to you, right? You might get this result. I have a particular browser extension which formats JSON for me nicely. I demonstrated in an earlier video. I think if you just Google Chrome extension JSON formatter, you'll find one. So, um, but even so, this is a good example of now a lot of APIs will give you back a ton of data. So really there's some detective work involved here in figuring out how to find the data. So let's, uh, let's say what we wanna do is show on screen the headlines for all of the articles that contain the word rainbow and maybe even a short snippet paragraph from those particular articles. So let's think about how we might do this. First of all, one thing I often like to do is start like minimizing these. You can see that really the API is just giving me back a, an object with a response property, a status property, and a copyright property, which is important to note that you were getting some copyrighted material here. Um, so I can unpack this response property. There's a meta property and a docs property. Meta probably has some information about the API query, how many calls I have left, that sort of thing. Docs, which has 10 items, I know this in advance, that's giving me 10 articles. So most APIs won't give you back all like 10,000 articles all at once. They're gonna give you 10 at a time and there's a way of paging through them, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this particular video. But what I wanna do is here look at docs. And docs is an array, so you can see this, this, these are each element of the array. So each one of these elements of the array is one particular article. So in this particular article, now I need to zoom back out here and look. Okay, I don't, multimedia, headline, there we go, keywords. There's so much information, publication date, byline. You can see some things are right there, like snippet, lead paragraph, abstract. I'm kind of interested in the headline, which is now in another object. So I can unpack that and see main, kicker, print headline. So we can see, you know, you, I could spend all day here like looking into the, the API, but I can kind of imagine now what I want if I want the headline is response.docs index, you know, zero for the first one, dot headline, dot main. So I, I like weirdly feel like I have that memorized now, probably because I've used the New York Times API a bunch of times, but this is the kind of thing that you're gonna be needing to take notes, practice, gonna make a mistake, try it again. Um, this is the kind of thing you're going to want to do on your own. But now we are ready to go back and start to write code. We've, we've looked at the API website, we've looked at the documentation, we've used the tool, and we've got a working path um, to, to getting data. And so now I'm going to go back to P5 and I'm going to say just at the beginning, load JSON and I want to, the, the API URL, I'll have that as a variable, and a callback called got data. So I'm going to make a variable, which is the URL, and I'm going to paste this URL right in here. Now, for expediency here, I'm not gonna go through the steps of breaking that URL into parts. I've done that several times in several other videos now, and in fact, I would say probably the exercise for you at the end of this video is to have the user input the search word and then get particular articles back with that search word. Right now, I'm just gonna get rainbow articles. But the first thing I wanna do, what I need to do right now is write this got data callback and remember, the got data callback needs an argument. That's where the data from the API they will fill that variable with the data. And I can just look at it to make sure it's working in the console. I'm not really going to look at it in the console, but I want to just hope that I see something there. And you can see there is something there. So hopefully we can, we can feel pretty confident that what's there is exactly the same as here. So now let's think about this again. Uh, Response.docs index zero dot headline dot main. Let's, 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 let's work with that. Uh, data dot response 
dot docs index zero dot headline dot main. Did I do I did I dare possibly get that right? <laughs> Let's try it again. Let's run it. Looks like I got that right. Let's look at the second article to see what the headline is. I'm changing that number zero. Hollywood dreams. That makes sense that you might have a rainbow in your Hollywood dreams. My Hollywood dreams are consist of YouTube videos about data and APIs, which is sort of a strange Hollywood dream. Some might say something to, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'll stop now. Um, uh, where are we? Oh, I've only been doing this. Oh, no, no, I forgot. I have two sections here. Anyway, <laughs> I'm back. Okay, so uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, what do I want to do with this? Well, I want to make something appear in the browser. Now, there's a lot of interesting applications here, and maybe I'll get to some ideas for you at the, towards the end of this video. But right now, let's at least make it loop through and show me every headline, and perhaps also a snippet. So let's go back to this. You can see snippet is actually just response.docsindex0.snippet. Snippet being like a short paragraph or a snippet from the article to give us some more information. So one thing that uh, you'll that is one thing that happens here is that I have an array, data.response.docs. And you know what I think can be useful? This is a useful technique. If I just make up a variable called articles and say articles is data.response.docs. Like, I'm going to need, in every time I try to look for data, I'm going to need to say data.response.docs, blah, 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 data.response.docs, da, da, da. I remix this, has kind of like a rhythmic quality to it, data.response.docs, da, da, da. But I'm going to need to do that over and over again. So it's, it's kind of useful if I just store that in a variable called articles, because now I can say things like, what I want to do is have a for loop, i goes from 0 to articles.length, you know, i plus plus. And I could say something like, uh, whoops, let me leave that down here for reference, right? I don't need to say data.response.docs headline main. I just need to say articles headline main. Well, art, what I need to say is, and I'll say create p articles index i dot headline dot main. So this should now loop through every single object in that array, that docs array, each one having a headline object in each headline having a main being the main headline. So if I run this now, you're going to see, here we go, I've got Rainbow International, Painbow Charms, Painbow, what's a Painbow? That sounds terrible. No, 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 no Painbows, Rainbows. Um, uh, East Village Birdman abandoning his nest of CDs. Anyway, there's some interesting articles about rainbows. Um, so, and, but maybe what I want to do actually is say create element. I'm going to make an H1 element for every uh, headline, and then I'm going to just quickly I'm going to kind of like trying to wrap this up here. I'm going to make a paragraph element for every snippet, which would be articles index i dot snippet. So again, there's a lot of data there. Articles index i dot headline dot main, articles index i dot snippet, make an h1, make a paragraph. And now when I look at this, we can see I've now got sort of like, you know, my own version in the New York Times right here of a bunch of articles and little snippets. And uh, I could change, you know, right now if I wanted to change what it's searching for, I've got to go into my code into this URL. You know, I could change it to porcupine and I could run it again. And you can see I've got now some prickly in name but refined on the table. I've got some articles about uh, porcupines. So here's what I would say to you. First of all, just showing you kind of the beginnings of what you could do here. So one thing that I think would be a good exercise is to make this work but not have to go type into the code to change the word, add a text input field, add a button. When the user enters something in that text input field and clicks the button, you get the articles with that search term. Another thing you might think about doing is can you add query string arguments, right? The only query argument I have right now is q equals porcupine, but if you go back to the tool, there was a begin and an end in terms of dates. So could I get all the articles from a particular year? Could I even have that year be selected by the user? That's something you might try. Another thing you might look into, and I might need to add some link or something in this, is that the New York Times will give you the frequency that a word appeared in the New York Times for a given year. So you can look at interesting trends, like when did the word computer start getting used often in articles? Or you know, this is a very totally trite <laughs> example, but you can think of something like how many times the word war used versus the word peace. 
So um, anyway, you'll be more thoughtful or creative about what kinds of comparisons might you be interested in doing, but that's something in this article search API you can also get is something about word frequency. So there's a lot of possibilities of things you might explore. If you make stuff, share them with me. I would love to hear about it. Um, and I hope that this was useful to you in how you might use the New York Times API. <laughs> this is me signing off. W F M X Y YouTube ITP hot lights room weird place over the window and uh, computer and I uh, okay goodbye I'll talk to you I don't have a hashtag for you hashtag uncomfortable person Dan okay goodbye oh wait this mouse fell asleep sleeping mouse again okay and I'm gonna stop.